and we're live. Roger, thanks a million for welcoming me into your uh, onto your mats here. Where are we? We're just off the M50 Junction 6, is it? Junction 6, Castlenock, that's it. Okay, and just to give the people listening an idea of, of where we are, we're in, what is it, about, is it 1,500 square foot yeah. there, thereabouts? 1,500 square foot. And just to give people an idea of where you've come from in the last two years or so, I trained with you briefly in Navan. That was, what was the square footage of that place? 600, 604. So you've practically, practically trebled the square yeah, footage of the yeah, facility. Yeah. Okay, and again, just to give people an idea of, of where you've come in the last two years, say, when I was training with you, the matted area was laid out when we arrived, but at the end of the training session, everyone basically chipped in. We picked up the mats, put them in a, a pile in like a fucking storage cupboard or whatever it was that was in the, the rugby club in Navan. But here we've 1,500 square foot of permanent matting. The wall is matted. I'm looking around. The place is pristine. The walls, the ceiling, everything is painted white. It's a world class facility. It's sharp. It's very good. It is. And like, mats, gyms in Ireland are, well, I think they're improving somewhat, but there's not too many like this. There's not too many martial arts gyms like this. And to, again, to give people an idea of, of where we are and where you've come from, like, you're from Kells, born and bred, is that right? That's right. And Kells isn't exactly known as a, a hub for Brazilian jiu jitsu worldwide. Yeah. There's not too many Brazil- Brazilians even in Kells, never mind meat. Yeah, exactly, yeah. and never mind BJJ black belts such as yeah. yourself, and yeah. congratulations on the recent promotion. Thank you very much. How long was that coming? Oh, Jesus, uh, 12, 11, 12 years, and just jiu-jitsu, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and then I was probably seven, eight years doing like traditional martial arts before that, so it's a long time. And when you say traditional martial arts? I was in Navin with... Uh, Martin O'Reilly, he's still there. He's a really, really nice fella. Uh, he has a school in Kennedy Place, is it? So across from the shopping centre where Donahue's, you know Donahue's electrical shop? Yeah. Down that lane, he has his little, his little Japanese dojo in there. It's lovely, like. Shogun, really. is it? Shogun martial arts, yeah. So I started in there with Martin. Not there, in, like in a school first and then another school and then the YMCA hall and moving around before he got his own spot. That guy now, Shogun, now, f- forgive my ignorance, but my understanding that, that that's traditional, sorry, traditional jiu-jitsu. Traditional Japanese jiu-jitsu, yeah. And what's the difference between that and what would be more popular these days, Bra- uh, so Brazilian? It's, it's basically the old form. It's, it's jiu-jitsu before Kano got to it, before he turned it into judo, before he put it for schools, basically. I think that's what he did with it. So it's, it's old school, like there's no sparring. It's, it's an art, you know what I mean? It's like... Don't get me wrong, like Martin is a tough dude. He's, I wouldn't like to tangle with him anyway at all, but it's, do you know what I mean? Like, it's it's not a live martial art, really, without trying to insult him, but. No, of course, well, it, it, it has its place. Yeah, it's great. Listen, people, especially Jiu Jitsu, we kind of get, we're a little bit elitist. We think Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, we think we're uh, the bee's knees, but there's something for everybody. If it's like these classical martial arts, if people just want to go and train, and if that's what's good for their head, do you know, let, let them do it. It's brilliant. Brazilian jiu-jitsu is not for everybody. No, certainly not. And I, I think that you say that, you know, BJJ practitioners might think that their their art is kind of the, the best art. But I think if, if you speak to somebody who's into Formula One or who's into, yeah. you know, whatever, whatever, pick your poison. Anybody that takes what they do seriously, they're obviously going to think what they do is the best to a degree. Yeah. And... Uh, I think martial artists tend to gravitate towards Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Like it, it's very rare somebody goes from Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu to like a, a classical or traditional martial art, if you know what I mean. Yeah, no, of, of course. And I, I think the beauty of, of that in, in, with Jiu-Jitsu in particular is you can pretty much go at it full tilt without ever really kind of injuring yourself or, or hurting yourself to a degree. Yeah, li- here, you're, uh, like you, even today, somebody got a busted nose. You're going to get tips same as anything if you play soccer you're going to get hurt but like i think jiu-jitsu is very rare you get injured during a submission do you know what i mean it's very rare somebody goes too much with a submission and you get hurt in training like it's very rare somebody snaps on an arm lock and you you pop your elbow you either hurt your elbow from not tapping or because your escape was you know what i mean you escaped wrong and you went the wrong way and you pop you do it yourself more so yeah no, of sense. course Accidental, basically, being accidental. The cause. Yeah, like you do, you get knee injuries. You get like your body will wear down because it's not an easy sport. You know what I mean? 
and I think the same can be said for, for running. I don't know anyone who takes their running seriously who doesn't have either dodgy knees or dodgy hips or dodgy ankles. Yeah. or You know, you, you train something long and hard enough, it's going to wear down the body, and, and so it should too. It's, it's all yeah. kind of part of it. But getting back to your story, so you're growing up in Kells. Like what age were you roughly when you met uh, Martin? Yes. Now this is going to be a problem because my memory is garbage. Um, I think about, I think before 2000, so... So were you in your teens or probably late teens or tw- early twenties? I'm I'm not really sure. And um, had you been playing football or hurling? The or? usual football. Like I was shit at sports. Terrible. I'm like the most unathletic person. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible at all sports. Played football. Was shit. Played handball. Played. I was just terrible. Never liked it. And you bumped into like? Did you go to a class or did you see a sign? I went to a class. I seen a poster and just fuck it. Let's try fighting it, look, it was a cool poster I think and I just says right let's go up and he, he showed some cool shit the first day and I was just hooked ok well, when was the transition then from that which would have been traditional martial arts or actually how long were you at the traditional martial arts oh for? man a long time uh, like I went to Japan and everything I was in Japan twice for a month at a time just training 4 or 5 weeks training in Japan like, it was great great experience Um must be six, seven years. I got the first cue. So the way Japanese jiu-jitsu works or the traditional, it was you get your green belt and you get tips on your belt. So you get nine tips. And on your last, your last tip, obviously, then is a black belt. So I got to the last tip. I was training for black belt. So it was like seven, and six, seven years. I don't really know exactly now, to be honest. So you were training for six, seven years there, thereabouts. So then you had a black belt in... No, I didn't, never got the black belt. So I was training, you know, like I was learning the katas or the techniques to test for your black belt. Okay, so you got up to the level just prior to getting the black yeah. belt. And why didn't you finish? I mean... I went to America. And what happened in America? And I, So I went to America uh, as I was... I think just as I got that first queue, I forget what way it works, first queue or ninth queue, the last one, and I tried training in America, but there was nobody there, so it was a a bit of a disaster, I had to go, so I was living in uh, the Bronx, if you know Manhattan, are you in Manhattan, or New York? Yeah, I have been actually, yeah. So I was living in the Bronx, and were you up in Woodlawn? No. It's the Irish part of the Bronx, so I went from Ireland to Ireland, (laughs) in New York, Um, and uh, the only traditional school that was like affiliated with the people I trained with was in Long Island so it was like a three hour one way trip so I used to do that every week once a week and I just got fed up so then I went to look for a boxing club I went to look for Gleason so I says right listen I'll find the best the best boxing club what's the best boxing club it's Gleason's in Brooklyn and I couldn't find it I went out twice and I couldn't find it I went, uh, got on the subway, jumped off. I had a map quest, you know, so it was before you had your phone. So I printed off the map quest. Okay, I jump off the subway, go down the back alley. A lot of dodgy lads back there, so jump in a taxi. <laughs> I got a bit scared, and I couldn't find license. So then I went home, and I looked up MMA, and that's, that's how I started jiu-jitsu. And how did you even know to look up MMA? I mean, you must have had some sort of encounter yeah, with it. I, I, I don't even think I was a big MMA fan at the time. The only thing I remember was Andrei Arlovsky. Remember Andrei Arlovsky used to... Uh, yeah, the, 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 with the fang gum shield. His fangs, TJ, yeah, yeah. looked like a cool dude. So that, that's the only thing I remember. No one about the UFC. Um, so I just looked up MMA. I think maybe the guy I was training with in Long Island told me, oh, if you're going to do something, do uh, go to an MMA gym. Because the idea was I'll uh, just do that on the side, you know. I wanted to train. For, I wanted to get my black belt in the other stuff. In the traditional martial yeah. arts? Yeah. Okay, in the traditional jiu-jitsu, should Traditional say. jiu-jitsu, yeah. And you said a moment ago there that when you, like you, you'd been to Japan and then when you went to New York, you wanted to get to, I don't know what term you use, but it was essentially the same, the same lineage, the same, the same type of club or the same yeah, affiliated so club. Yeah, so the same, said, like Grandmaster. Okay. Uh, you see, I forget all these details, but a Grandmaster Tanamura, Tamura. I should know this, I'm terrible. <laughs> But can you lay out for people who wouldn't be in the the kind of the, the MMA or BJJ or even martial arts, um, in, if they're not in that loop, how important lineage is? 
because you're you're a black belt now, but you're in in BJJ Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and you have that under Marcelo Garcia. Yeah. But that not all black belts are created equal. I think it's fair to say. No, well here I'm created equal. I'm I'm a very average black belt. I'm a club black belt, but being under the lineage of Marcelo is is huge. Going back to the traditional martial arts, that was just. Uh, I think it's. I just wanted to get my belt off the same guy I trained with all along, because the difference with jiu-jitsu. I see. I say jiu-jitsu. When I say jiu-jitsu, it's Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Um, and then the traditional stuff is the, the traditional martial arts. At least when I was doing it, were they're very competitive against each other. Like you wouldn't really talk to them. Like we see an Irish people in Japan from a different club, we'd say, and we didn't even go over and talk to them. Like looking back on it, that was ridiculous. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If you've seen another jiu-jitsu, if you've seen a guy. Anywhere with a jiu-jitsu t-shirt now, fuck me, I'll go over and talk to that fella he has, or if he's cauliflower ears or something, you go and you have to, ch- to crack with him and chat with him. Maybe he's from a, a competitive club, but you'll still mix it up. Like, Yeah, you, you see him as, or you view him as someone that you might learn something from or that yeah. you might get something out you of. You just basically. have that camaraderie, like, you, you do jiu-jitsu, it's great. You, you know the struggle, I suppose, do you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but back then I was, looking back, that's a bit strange. So you're in New York, you're looking for an MMA club. Yes. And how, how do you even, like, these days, and for people of a, of a certain age, let's say the, the digital natives or the millennials, yeah. they're so just used to, you know, MMA in New York, boom, you've that got was it. the directions I, to 20 places. I did. It was, I remember it was Googling at the time. It was okay, a, so a lot of research. But it was probably back on the, definitely forums. Um, definitely forums. I think, like, Sherdog and... The underground. I don't know if you know these forums. Sure, dog is actually from That's the one thing I brought a smile to my face. Actually, yeah. here. I think that's what I used probably at the time was Sure, dog or the underground. And then there was a few others that are probably dead. And did you find uh, Marcelo Garcia straight no, away? So or? Again, I wanted it at the time. I wanted it right. What's the best MMA gym? And Henzo's was the one that kept popping up. But being the Irish fella that I was so I'd ring up Henzo's and this friendly Brazilian fella would answer yes my friend come down try the class uh, you don't pay I said right but how much is it <laughs> no my friend come down have a look I said yeah but how much is it uh, I just want to know before I go down listen my friend come down I, I give you a class and you look you see the place it's beautiful that's why I didn't go down fuck him I didn't trust him <laughs> hilarious and for, again for the uninitiated this is Henzo Gracie presumably yeah, yeah. Uh, so if I had it went down I don't know what would be happening now like I'm sure I would have stuck at it, been a black belt a lot earlier probably, but probably doing MMA or something, I don't really know. And again, for the uninitiated, like who, who is Henzo Gracie or what? What's the Henzo is a, is a legend, like Henzo is definitely one of the pioneers of MMA and Jiu-Jitsu. Um, but at the time, I think his gym was like $300 a month or something. I wouldn't have been able to afford it anyway. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the best... Best, definitely the best gym in New York at the time. Unbelievable. Uh, the world, probably. Probably the world, yep. Definitely on the East Coast, maybe in America. Definitely the best MMA, Jiu-Jitsu. So that kind of didn't happen, say? Didn't happen. Didn't trust them. <laughs> the, the, the foreign accent and they uh, not telling me the price. I don't know if that's the Irish in me. Yeah, the, the skeptical Kells head in you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't go down anyway. Um, and then I went to... Ronan Athletics is called Christian Montes was the head coach so I started off doing MMA loved it hooked straight away just went in and got you know yourself first time you go in you get killed stone dead because <laughs> you, you like to think that you, especially me I had training for so long doing martial arts you get a you get a sense of maybe false security about yourself you go in and these skinny lads just beat the shit out of you it's it's, it's a kind of a wake up call Oh, you, you get humbled. Yeah, definitely. You especially you definitely if do. you're, especially if you're, you know, next stop black belt level. Yeah. You know, you're, you're, you're top of your game. You're, you're rubbing shoulders and sparring and rolling with the best of the best, yeah. and then all of a sudden, some lad with maybe six months striking, or maybe six months jujitsu, ju- or not jujitsu, judo or wrestling, and they just throw you on your back. Yeah. And you're dead. That's it. So four nights a week, hooked, just hooked. Four nights, do all the classes. And that was it. That's the start of it. And sorry, whose club was that? Christian Montes is the guy's name. He's a black belt now. He's still in Manhattan. He's still in New York. A good friend of mine. Really good guy. Um, 
he had a few pro fights. I think he fought uh, what's the guy's name from Boston in the UFC? Uh, Joe Lozon. He fought Joe Lozon MMA. So he's kind of old school MMA guy. Yeah. Uh, uh, like I think the beauty of MMA then is if you give it up or you're not interested in the striking anymore, you can always just fall back on jujitsu. So that's what he did. Like he still has the MMA club, but I think he himself is more focused on jujitsu. I've actually heard that as a, a common complaint from people running MMA clubs that they they get in lads who have no martial arts background. They train them up in all the different disciplines, and then they they lose a certain percentage of them to BJJ, say because I don't know maybe the the striking is too much for them, or I don't know what it is. But again. It, always falling back on the fact that you can always kind of go full tilt within reason and not get you know the black eye that you might from a punch or a kick or whatever it is yeah. like you really can't train jiu-jitsu forever that's my goal at the end of this is like when I'm 50 or 60 to come up here with, with a, a few more 50 or 60 year old black belts and just sit down like this maybe roll every 5 minutes have a coffee come back up roll have a shower go home like that's the retired life for me at 50 yeah but that's what I'm doing like that's like that's what you're doing here you're, you're creating people that you're, it's training partners it's not like other martial arts either I know I'm the coach and whatever else but it, it is training partners you're making do you know what I mean for yourself oh absolutely and friends for life too there's a, there's a certain I don't know I don't know if intimacy is probably the wrong word but there's a, there's a certain yeah. connection between sparring partners there is like there's that unwritten rule or that unwritten agreement you have where if I tap you're going to let go and, and vice versa it's, it's unspoken like you don't go in now you're going to let you, when I tap you let go this time right it's from day one like it's it's just there so you really are trusting that fella not to, to, to when you when you ask him to, to, to let go when you tap that he does it and like that's realistically I don't know who said I think maybe Frank Muir if somebody has you in a choke, if they don't let go, like their their lives are in your hands for a second, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, absolutely. 100%. So that trust is big. I remember uh, I was actually doing a, a skydive before, and uh, before we got into the plane, the I was doing a tandem. So I'm, there's a guy kind of a, a yeah. strapped onto my back, and when we were going up in the plane, he, he said that it was a. Uh, a great experience for him and it was the the trust that other people were willing to put in him because for whatever reason if you know when he jumps out of the plane if he doesn't decide to pull that chute it's fuck all I could have done that I won't like, try you know? do that no way <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you me. can see the, the analogy yeah, there, yeah, like, yeah. you know you, you are putting essentially your life and your limbs more to the point yeah. uh, in someone else's hands I know it's an extreme way to say it but kind of yeah oh no it, uh, I think so I think so yeah um, and that works both ways because you know you you are essentially letting someone else put your life in their hands only to return the favour, you know, yeah, five yeah, minutes yeah. later. Yeah. So you're in New York, you're training away, and how do you transition then or to the next club or, or what happens? Um, so I had kids, basically, and I wasn't allowed to train at nighttime anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a new rule in the, in the household, which is very fair. So morning classes. So I just had to start training in the morning. And Christian's gym just didn't have people who wanted to train in the mornings. Um, and then at the same time, so Emma is my oldest. She was born in 2008. So at the same time, we were, fuck it, we'll go home from America. Like, just because she was born before she, you know, for the, the grandparents and all. She was the first on both sides. So we were kind of hemming and hawing about going home to Ireland. And right, we'll go home in six months. So I says to Christian, I says, I have no training in the morning. I want to squeeze in as much training as I can before I go to Ireland. And he recommended I go to Marcelo's. He just moved into New York. Like, for people to understand, like, Marcelo is literally top two, three jiu-jitsu people ever. And, like, that's not exaggerating. He's best in the world at the time. Literally the best, like... Jiu-Jitsu is broken down into weight classes for sport, but like he would compete at the absolutes with anybody, and he'd hold his own against everybody. Like he was, and he's not a big man by any stretch. Same size as me. Yeah, he's a small dude. Like, but just his technique and his—he just changed the game so much. It's just very lucky to be 
very lucky to live in the same place as him. Very lucky for him to have a gym open at the same time I was training. And just lucky to be able to go and train. I think it was great. So I went over there, tried it, again got hooked at that place again. It was brilliant. So, sorry, that was... Because he's just BJJ, isn't he? He's just presumably Just jiu-jitsu. jiu-jitsu, yeah. Just jiu-jitsu. So you went from the previous gym... Like, no, yeah, but I wasn't training MMA for a long time. I gave up MMA. I was sh- like, you have to be athletic for that. I'm back again to being completely non-athletic. Um... Uh, and as well, I was I was getting headaches from the sparring, even soft, soft sparring in MMA. You know yourself, you you'd be doing a bit of ground upon. You just touched them. I like I'd wake up the next day with headaches, so I just it wasn't for me. Gave up. Just, just focused on jujitsu then. I think you, you're touching on something there that's probably going to come out of the woodwork in the not too distant future. This idea of of head injuries and yeah, what? well it, it's out already, isn't it? It, it isn't. It isn't. It's out to the people who are kind of in that loop like myself and yourself have kind of heard about it and probably understand about, a bit about it but for the most part yeah. I think I, th- I think there's a big expose yet to be done on it I think I think like again w- this my gym has nothing to do with MMA like we, we're non-MMA not, we're not against it but we didn't jump on that bandwagon do you know what I mean like we're pure grappling jiu-jitsu wrestling takedowns that's a gi no gi um I forget what I was going with that, but what were we saying before that? The um, well, you were saying how you oh, transitioned, yeah. I think, was it? No, the the head injuries. So yes. I think back in the day, I was saying that I don't really know what's going on now in the MMA clubs, but back in the day, it was a lot different than training is now. Like there's not as I don't think there's as much sparring, wild sparring that goes on nowadays. No, and I, I think even at the the highest levels, um, oh, what's his name, the Soroni, is it? I don't think he's... Does, does he spar anymore? Supposedly not. Him and um, uh, Robbie Lawler. Yeah. Supposedly they gave up sparring. And Robbie Lawler's real old school. Like, he's from the military camp. Like, they used to just bait each other. Yeah, well, that was the, the norm back in the day, I suppose. You you went in and you literally kicked the shit out of each other. And that was your, you know, quote-unquote sparring. They, they yeah. fought, essentially. And that's the problem in these small MMA gyms that the coaches maybe don't have too much experience competing or... They're not from the bigger clubs, like so they'll just get lads in. And sparring is what gets you better, right? Supposedly, but you get them brain injuries then, five, ten, twenty years down the line. Yeah, where I uh, trained originally with the, the MMA and the things was in Kokoro, and Kokoro had a strict rule that you could you couldn't spar until you were training there at least twice a week for three months. That was just a just a, a rule of a rule of the club so at least twice a week for three months before you were allowed spar and i know of other clubs that will have you competing so in the cage in a competition within that space of time and like, that's fucking nothing short of dangerous really yeah that's fucked up but look each to their own so you end up in marcella's you're loving it. You had been really only focusing on the BJJ before that. How long you were with Marcella, or how big of a club did he have at at the time, or who was he at the time? Was he anybody? He, yeah, he was. He was. It was maybe not as big as he is now, but he was. Everybody knew Marcelo. Right. He had one eighty cc. Like when was this? Jeez, dates are bad with me. Um, probably two thousand and nine when I went in. So okay. he he won his first eighty cc two thousand and three. So that's six years later, six years of... And ADCC is the biggest nogi grappling competition. And can you just explain to people what nogi is for a start? Nogi, so... Uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is in the, in the gi or the Japanese kimono. Gi is, of course, a very funny word for Irish people. Hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> gi is... Uh, I think it comes from the Japanese word dogi, which is the jacket. So just shorten it to gi. So uh, anytime I'm emailing any new people... I just call it a kimono <laughs> or a uniform. <laughs> you want to put them off a free gi. You get a free gi every time you. <laughs> <laughs> it's because the, the, the child in me came racing to the service when you asked me did I have one because yeah, you could yeah, bring yeah. one for me there. Because again, just to kind of fill people in the loop, we just did a training session here before we uh, before we started recording this, and this is the the second off the lead and on the road podcast. So we're actually sitting here in your facility here in uh, just off Junction Six. It was what total fitness, wasn't it? So people are familiar with who yeah. we are. Yeah, um, total fitness. It was a big global gym. Like it's the place class. Like there used to be a big massive pool. I know 
some of the lads tr used to train there. Uh, I don't know if it was Ben Dunn or somebody, one of these rich fuckers back in the day before the boom, or before the boom busted. Mm, back in the days, right? Yeah, and this place used to be thronged, so it's probably closed eight years. It's just shut down, shut the doors. Because I didn't actually realise it was back open until I yeah. texted you about kind of organising this podcast. This is the problem. Well, it's not a problem yet. Like, when word gets out, this place, I think it's... it's it's even, I can see it every week, it's getting busier and busier. It's only open six, six, eight weeks, maybe. We'll put it this way, I drive by it twice a week, on a mi at a minimum, doing my deliveries into Dublin. Didn't know. And I still didn't know it was well, open. There you so. go, so that's a problem probably we have, well, like, as a, the whole building has, that we need to get the word out better. Well, hopefully this will give it a dig out. So, yeah, yeah. you have a, a Facebook page at the very least, is there a website or...? We have everything, we have Facebook, just... Uh, just search Royal Grappling Academy. Royal Grappling Academy is the, the name of the club. Okay, well, I'll get you to plug the the details at the end of the at the end of the podcast before we go. Make sure to remind me if I forget. But if you Google Royal Grappling Academy, that's I'd where it's take at. Take you everywhere. Orga.ie. Fancy, or, or we fancy website. Nice. Very good. So you're with Marcella. You walk in the door. You've you're just short of a black belt in traditional jiu-jitsu. Had you been grading, say, I up was a point, purple belt. You're a purple belt. Yeah, okay. so I just got my purple belt. Uh, but I was, I hadn't r very, very rarely trained in the gi. So I was a no gi. I hate the gi. I despised it. The only reason I got my purple belt is because I, I competed. Like Christian made me compete in the gi at a competition and I won my division. And I think I got second in the the absolute so he on the podium he gave me my purple belt um, but I hated the gi so when I went to Marcelo I was like no choice but to put it on and get strangled by everybody and was he doing was he tr like um, coaching Nogi at the time or does he coach Nogi or who Marcelo Marcelo's gym same as us so I, I, I try to copy everything he does or like you know take it from because what he does obviously works because, and again, just to be clear for, for everyone else, this is a, a Marcelo Garcia affiliate yes. club. Marcelo Garcia Association, yeah. Okay. Very lucky to have that. Yeah, so he, um, basically his schedule is half gi, half no gi, which is rare for pure jiu-jitsu gyms. A lot of them, maybe once a week they'll do no gi, or twice a week. Like for us, it's half the classes are gi, half classes are no gi, so you get that mix. And what is it about the gi? Because I, I'm, I'm not a fan of it, to be honest. And I don't know if that's because of the MMA background, that all the training that I was doing wasn't in it. To me, like put it this way, I go swimming once a week in open water in, in lakes around the country, and I don't even wear a wetsuit because I see that as, as gear, if that makes sense. And I kind of view the gi as the same. It's, it's gear, it's, it's Which, stuff. Know. Do you it know is, but at the same time, no gi, you're not naked, like you have to put on shorts and a t-shirt or whatever you have to put on. True, but there's a But it's only, it's a top and a bottom, that's it. But there's a big difference now, but uh, Jesus, you know this better than I do, there's a big difference between a, a pair of shorts and a, a tight t-shirt or a rash guard, I know, and the I know. collar and the cuffs yeah, and yeah. the... But it's, just, it's more things to be to, have to deal with. It's more to, fucking complicated. <laughs> it isn't, it isn't, just don't let them grab it. <laughs> my, that's my jiu-jitsu, it's simple, don't let them do it. Be there first, like... Uh, no, it is. It, I hated it for a long time, and now I prefer it. I think a lot more. Yeah, and I, I guess maybe because I my jujitsu is it's slow and simple. I just squash people, submit them. That's it. And I'm not like I'm small, but that's my jujitsu is simple. I just get on top, squash them, submit them. I think there's a there's a great analogy I've seen before in picture form. I'll try and describe it as best I can, but it was um, like a Swiss Army knife, and one picture was a Swiss army knife with, you know, 30 different things that pop out of it, you yeah. know, three different types of knives, a saw, a scissors, a magnifying glass, fucking flint for starting fire, all this. And that was essentially the white belt. And then the blue belt and the purple belt and the brown belt and the black belt, it got progressively less till you only had maybe two things in the black belt. And I think there's a, another analogy there with, is it a, is it a, not Jackie Chan, is it a Bruce Lee quote? Don't fear the man with a thousand kicks. Fear the man with one kick. He's practiced a thousand yeah, yeah, times. Yeah. So keep it simple. Get the fundamentals right. That's your philosophy here, essentially, is it? Or? It, it is, and it isn't. Like I, I do. Like for me now, I'm, I'm I'm past 35, so I'm not that much of a competitor anymore. I'm thinking more about coaching all the time. And if 
like Bernardo Free is another grappler from Marcelo's. He has a very simple attitude in jiu-jitsu. His motto is one sweep, one pass. And that's how he wins all his matches. He gets one sweep, sweeps absolutely everybody with it. And it, so a sweep is just basically you're on the bottom, you get on top. So I, again, for the uninitiated, you're, you're lying on your back. You, your opponent is essentially on top of you. Yeah. So you reverse the position, you get on top, and then you pass their guard. So you get by their legs, and then he submits them. So he basically perfected a sweep and a pass and then connected them together. And he won like four or five world championships with that. So that's great um, for a competitor. But if you want to get better at jiu-jitsu, I think you have to... You have to try new things and you have to you have to lose, you have to make mistakes. If you just refine one technique, you still if that doesn't work, you still have to go to B, C, D, E, if you know what I mean. Oh no, I, d- I do and I, again there's, there's I love my analogies, but I think there's an analogy that people who play video games, let's say the, the old kind of street fighter thing, if you had one sequence of buttons that did one move and that yeah. always worked yeah. you might win all the time but it's, no, it's not fun and yeah. you're not getting any better do you like in a way yeah. it, it is fun if competing to win that way well true if you're, if you're if training totally it's, you're not getting better yeah. like I, I've I have a pass I have one pass I do it works for me very effectively I, I used it last year or this year at the Europeans I think I, every match I did it and I passed the guy's guard I, I, I won my weight and absolute using basically one pass but I can't do it in the gym because I'm not getting better at anything else. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then what happens when I go out and then the guy can stop that pass? I'm just lost. I'm not lost, but you know what I mean. No, you're out, you're out of the runnings, really. Like. Yeah. Like, yeah, for competition, you need your A game and you need to be able to force your A game. But for training, it's, it's not enjoyable then, if you know what I mean, if you're just doing the same thing, beating everybody with the one or two things no of course you touched on something there that I, I was meaning to bring up you're what close t- 35 plus I think you said very about, very very sheepish <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you have what you refer to as uh, is it OM JJ old man jiu jitsu old man yeah no that's not me that's one of the boys Aiden Hogan actually from Navin uh, he's he made his own t-shirt old man jiu jitsu yeah but oh, we have old own, man is it? Well, he just he made I think his wife made it from class it's cool, yeah. But we do. We have we have over thirty five classes, twice a week as well. And just the, to be clear for everyone listening, that's beginners classes essentially. So yeah, well, a bit of both, I suppose. A bit of both, yeah. Like in beginners, we have beginners curriculum. Like we have beginner specific classes. The over thirty fives is more for the just the, old, the older lads, but the older lads that they're not in here with the twenty year old fucking killers like that compete every weekend. Yeah. There's, believe me, there's some 36 and 7 year old killers out there as well, but maybe you want to do a slower game or you just want to drill your own technique. It's just making, making Jiu Jitsu more available for somebody, different people. Like. I, I think that's so important because I, I know a friend of mine, Pat O'Reilly, only started it recently, with, with yourselves actually. Oh, Pat, he yeah. works with Aiden. Is right. And um, I think I might have mentioned it in the previous podcast. I gave uh, BJJ generally a bit of a plug, but. I think he said that you're going to be 50 someday. You may as well be 50 with a black belt. And there you go, yeah. Which is a, a cool way of looking at it. Like. 50 with a black belt in jiu-jitsu is big, yeah. Um, but I think like if there's a lot of people that missed out on the sports buzz of life in general because maybe when they were 12, they weren't any good at football. That's and me. because of that, you know, they've never done anything since. But I think yeah. BJJ is one of the few things that you can really get into and enjoy and For do sure. well in. Like there's Aiden from Navin. Like I think he's fifty. Let's say he's just he's gone fifty anyway. <laughs> but he just he just got his blue belt, so he started late forties. Yeah, and he's on track to get his purple belt. Brown, like that's fucking savage. No, no, it's class. Like even to see, for like in our this club in general has a lot of older. I'd say most of our members are over thirty. Right. Which is strange for a, a definitely a, mar- a combat sports gym. Um. But it's it's great to see a forty year old man there struggling on the mat, like in the evening instead of going home sitting on the couch watching the telly. Yeah, he's up here trying to get some gorilla off him or, and trying to pass his guard, and it's fucking great to see like str- like th- them little struggles we have. Like there's no there's not too many people forty forty five doing that every night or even two or three nights a week. It's great. It's really good to see. But you're it's so beneficial. I think people are. I think society 
wide were missing out on a bit of kind of yeah. a bit of hardship and a bit of some lads strangling thing, it? it is very much so yeah. very much so and again that that kind of feeling that you get like I, I know when I, I get it every so often when I'm at a wedding say and there's some lad and you know he's bananas drunk and he's causing a bit of a ruckus and it's nice to know that you know if he came over and maybe pushed you or pushed your missus or whatever it's nice to have a feeling that not that you can do what you want to anyone but just I don't know you don't feel as I don't know you don't feel as much of a a prey animal maybe as as no. you would if you if you haven't done it no no that's definitely true like it, I think a lot of uh, Jiu Jitsu definitely is great for self defense but I think a lot of people teach it as a, a street fighting system which is a lot of bollocks like the first first thing about self defense is a wedding is different like what you're talking about okay some fellas getting a bit ahead of himself he's getting a bit messy drunk look the self defence will be moving yourself in that situation fuck of it we'll just go to the other bar like yes. that's real self defence yes absolutely self defence is not waiting for him to bump into you spill your drink and then you fucking do you know what I mean of course yeah yeah. like yeah Jiu Jitsu is great for self defence it will give you an edge over anybody and like you have a background as well in MMA right yeah like that's real self defence I think uh, one thing I love about that though is the more experience you have in either BJJ or, or MMA or judo or whatever it is, I think the less likely that you are yeah. to actually get involved in something. Yeah. And I think a big part of that is it gives you a certain confidence and people who are people who are more prone to maybe be a bully tend to be weaker on the inside and they can they can sense your confidence so they tend not to pick on Exactly. You know, then, go back to that primal thing it's like animals they're going to pick the weakest member of the herd right of course it is. You so you're, like you have a, if you've trained I think you have that you have that confidence about you you have that I don't say an aura but, but I think people kind of get that feeling of that feels a bit forget about cauliflower ears or anything but if you just have that if you walk a certain way people are going to think that they're not going to fuck with you basically no absolutely like they say what is it that is it 80 percent of communication is in body language and if you're yeah. you know if, if you've never trained and if you're sitting on the couch getting the ear bent off you by your missus and your kids are wrecking your head like seven days a week yeah 52 weeks of the year that does something to your your self-esteem and your confidence and your body posture and then when somebody says something aggressive to towards you all you can kind of do is kind of shrivel up and almost say to yourself please don't hit me but if you're training once or twice a week and you're chatting with the lads and you've a bit of crack and you've a bit of life outside home and, and all the rest of it, you just your your posture and your your body language just basically yeah. says don't fuck with me to a degree. Yeah. Like. Uh, getting back to New York, you went into Marcella's as what a purple belt. Purple belt, yeah, like I think 2009, maybe the end of 2009. And you knew that the writing was on the wall. You had to basically head home to a degree. I was going home six months. Oh fuck! Okay, so you're only there for I six didn't, months. No, or? I didn't go home six months. That was the problem. <laughs> like, I, I realized how lucky I was to be there, so I kind of talked her out of going home, and we stayed there for another three years. Jesus. So I was three. Well, less than three years in Marcelo's. So then, I'm just trying to think of the years. I left in 2013, so maybe early 2010. I was in, or middle of 2010. And. You went in as a purple belt and left as... Left as a brown belt. Okay. And came back then and immediately set up a gym or... No, so this gym it was a re- is Foxy's gym, Paul Fox. He's kind of an old school jiu-jitsu fella in Ireland. Okay. He's around a lot longer than me in Ireland. Um, so he had the gym set up on my first night. I had And again, Marcelo's is like a hub. The amount of Irish people that go in there, even now, there's an Irish person in there every week nearly. It's just where you go if you're in New York. You go to Marcelo's. So Foxy was in, and we were just, just chatting. And so, sorry, you met Paul Fox in the gym? In Marcelo's, yeah. Okay, okay. He was over in New York. He was over in New York set up at a Pogues concert or something. No oh, hey. He called in, did a bit of training. And we just stayed in touch on, online, Facebook. I think Facebook or whatever. Um, so when I came home, I hooked up with Foxy, went up to the gym. There was like four people in the gym and Foxy. So I was going for Marcelo's with 50 people on the mats to four white belts. It was a bit of a wake-up call. I was about to jump back on the plane straight away. <laughs> um, but 
now we have this, so put in the work and we got here. And when you say Foxy had a a club here in Ireland already, was that a Marcelo Garcia affiliated no, it was club? Royal Grappling Academy. So Royal Grappling Academy is the name of the gym. And then like you, you like you need I need a coach. Like you know, I'm a, I am a black belt but I still have to learn. Like I'm a new black belt. Um you're always learning. A black belt in jujitsu basically shows you you find out that you know fuck all in jiu-jitsu basically <laughs> I've heard that before I need to get s- the finger on and start learning which is kind of sickening to someone at my level <laughs> yeah I don't know anything about jiu-jitsu um, so I still need a coach still need that contact with New York Marcelo the coaches over there Paul Schreiner like we're super lucky to be to have that background um, but we were Royal Grappling Academy um, we were four or five members just slowly we just uh, every month we get a new member fucking um, I think about a year in we officially joined the Marcelo Garcia Association first one outside America okay very good yeah savage and the the Royal Grappling Academy that Foxy would have um, founded say was that was where in Kells or in Blanchestown okay yeah so we have, there's Blanchestown, so we have this, well this is Cas- Castle Knock. Oh, we have Castle Knock, posh. or Dublin, I think I'm just going to call it Dublin, the Royal Grand <laughs> Academy of Dublin. So we have the Dublin, this is the headquarters, and then we have Navin as well. So we have two, we have two spots. Was there a cavern mm. thrown in the mix there for a while? There's a li- yeah, the, the cavern lads come up to Navin now. Like okay. there's, a, there's a small little group in Cavan that do their own bit of training. The Cavages. The Cavages. The Cavages, <laughs> yeah, the Cavan <laughs> Savages. Uh, yeah, but there's the two. It's a bit, and the reason they just do Navin, like Navin is small, but it just saves me driving up here from Kells six nights, five mornings a week. Like, it's just too much. And can you give people an idea of when the classes are or where they are? Some that might be interested yeah, so in maybe taking it up. Here in, in uh, Junction 6, five mornings at half ten, and every evening there's classes. I'm sorry, is that Monday to Friday at half Monday ten? Monday to Friday at half ten. And actually, Saturday half nine Sunday ten o'clock like seven mornings and five nights full schedule okay and presumably the, the times are on the Facebook page or the website F- or that. Facebook page website yeah okay and just to lay things out from, from my perspective I did a class with you today just before we started this podcast and it would have been my first class since I trained with you which is over two years ago which is kind of sickening but um, walked in like what do people need to bring say for their let's say if they've never done it before they're, they're just interested in giving it a lash what would you recommend like is there a particular day that's more beginner friendly or yeah well, like we have beginner specific classes and it, even if you're not like wherever you live if it's not if it's if we're not the closest gym or the easiest to get there just try a jiu-jitsu class it's it's fucking it's unbelievable like, like you can talk about it but it's it really the benefits are it's fucking savage just go try a class and if you get hooked you get hooked again it's not for everybody but if you do get hooked it's fucking you can I know it's cliche but it can change your life for the better oh certainly and I think one thing that amazed me about about it and, and MMA I suppose back in the day was the learning curve is so steep so for argument's sake if, if you start off if you, went, if you walk into your first BJJ class and it's literally your first day there you're not going to know anything you're not going to you know everything's just going to be so foreign and everybody's when you're doing the, the bit of light rolling towards the end everyone's just going to be able to tap you at will because you know you don't you have no clue what you're doing obviously enough but if you're only doing it for maybe two months you're the equivalent of a black belt to the guy who just walks in and starts on that day so that yeah. you get very good relatively speaking very fast I think you do you do and then you get come against somebody training ten years to your two weeks or two yeah, months. Well, the, yeah, uh, of course, absolutely. And there's always, always someone better than you. Yeah, there, there really is. Uh, no, it is. You, you do like them for six weeks. If you're rolling, if you're not doing a beginner specific curriculum, we say like we do beginner specific classes. Just because some people, if some people come in and you expect them to roll, they'll get put off. They'll get everybody's different, right? Yeah. If I had to come in and do a beginner's class, I don't think I would have stayed doing jiu-jitsu. I would have said, this is shit, I think. You know, some people want to get stuck in. Some people want to ease themselves in lightly. Maybe after 10 classes, you throw them in doing a bit of positional sparring. Or Everybody's different. So you that's why you have the options here. You, you can do your... Be- and Most people, we ask them to start with the beginner's classes. 
Yeah, and look, I, I'll know by somebody. I'll know by their movements if they're, if they're, like if it's not for everybody. Some people, some people will get shit like that. Yeah, it drives me mad. Because <laughs> I'm the opposite. Like, it takes me ages to get stuff. But some people just pick up stuff so fast, and you can say to them, "Listen, if you want to come down in the morning, we have a half ten class. You can jump in." I just I can see by you that either you have that athletic background or you're just a natural. And then some people you're showing them something twenty times, so put your right foot there, and they put their ear on the ground instead of their <laughs> right foot. That's me. Like if somebody was teaching me, and for them they just takes a bit longer. So beginners classes are perfect. Yeah, no, of course, no, absolutely. As as you say, got something for everyone. Say. Yeah. So you were over with Marcella. You joined forces with Paul Fox. You have the couple of classes now. You got your belt, your black belt. How did that work? So your you were a purple belt over in, um, or sorry, a brown belt with Marcelo in New York. Then you came back here. You've been training away. How does having a coach so many thousand of clam, so many thousand kilometers away? How does that work? Um, well, the difference here's the thing, right? See, when I came home, like three two thousand and thirteen, I was a brown belt. But I was fucking sharp as fuck at jiu-jitsu. Like, I, I didn't know as much as I do now. Because to teach... Like, being a teacher and being a competitor is completely different. Like, when I... Back then, like... I think me back then would beat me up now. Even though me now, I know a lot more jiu-jitsu, if that makes sense. Uh, is that an athleticism thing, or...? I think I was just... I was in better shape. I was sharper. I was training with monsters in New York. Every day, like... Yeah. Um, and again, what I knew... I didn't know as much... But what I was doing was sharp, you know what I mean? I was... Back to what we were saying there exactly, earlier. You yeah. had you know, the one or two yeah. kind of killer moves that So worked. now I have to learn the whole jiu-jitsu because I have to teach everybody. Like I have yeah. to teach games I don't play. I have to teach spider guard. I have to teach collar chokes from closed guard. And so I have to learn these things. I've often I have to perfect them and then teach them. And then my other stuff kind of comes back, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no, of course. Um, you reminded me of something there that I... I tend to hear from all sorts of different people in, in all sorts of walks of life that they didn't really start learning and understanding how things worked until you actually had to try and explain it to somebody else say. has exactly. that been your definitely definitely like I was going on autopilot yeah first time I came here to teach like I'm sure my first few months were shit I'm not saying I'm a great teacher now but I'm sure the first few months I was teaching was shit for the lads because I was only teaching what I know and I think I was expecting them to be able to do it like me straight away. Of course. Bit of a, bit of a, probably a bit of a grumpy fucker. <laughs> <laughs> I still get that. People call me grumpy here, but <laughs> they know I'm only messing. Um, yeah, so going on autopilot is great for competition. Yeah, muscle memory. Trying to teach it then is, what do I do now? What, why is this working for me? Oh, yeah, right, maybe I lift my hips or I turn a little bit more. Or I put my weight that way. And then when you, you're thinking about your doing these, it's getting slower as you do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Then when you're doing real life, you kind of... Because there's, there's a lot going on, I suppose, an analogy for people listening that, that mightn't really understand. They might be able to, let's say, write a sentence, but if you were to try and teach somebody, you know, how to hold a pen and how to make every little letter and every little turn and the spaces and capitals and commas and punctuation, yeah, Jesus, and yeah. there's, there's an awful lot going yeah. in that you don't really think of, I suppose. Yeah. There is, there's, especially when you start teaching, like... So first year, uh, I think for me, I think you expect them to be able to do things easier. Then you tend to overteach, so you give you give too, way too much details. And then, you t- like Paul Schreiner, he's one of the coaches in Marcelo's. He's an unbelievable teacher. Just the way he teaches, like he's a super smart guy, but he doesn't uh, he doesn't overteach. He's just very efficient with his his teaching. If that makes sense with his words yeah, he when does, he's teaching, he doesn't tell you too much or too little. He just kind of gets yeah, but it he right. still gets everything across. Yeah, he's he's an unbelievable teacher, um, and just the way he teaches, you you try and learn from. So that's me now. I'm trying to learn from coaches instead of learning from competitors. If that makes sense. Yeah. So like at the start, I was expecting people to understand what I'm doing just by watching me and do that, do that, and do that. Right, good, let's go. Then I like maybe a year or two years later, I was over teaching, trying to teach everything. So put your hand here, make sure your pinky's pointed to the ceiling, your other finger's pointing down, and your ear is hit off, whatever. Yeah. So you kind of have to find that, that happy medium. And as you're coaching, are you still competing? or? Yeah, 
Well, I haven't competed, no. The problem with being an old man jiu-jitsu person is you get injured a bit more. And is there, old, is there competitive old there man is, jiu-jitsu? Yeah, that's, like I, I, that's the Europeans I won was the Masters, so over 30s. That's another beauty of jiu-jitsu is you can compete against people your own age, your own skill. And weight class, I think, is, and is weight class, important yeah. for people to understand. So it's great. So what weight class are you? A middleweight, fat middleweight. You're middleweight? Yeah. I wouldn't have put you as a middleweight. What height are you? Eight, oh, I don't five and a half, four. You're, dare I say, short for middleweight, are you? I, I'm small, I'm a small fucker, yeah. Like, I used to compete at medium heavy, I was just lazy. Jesus. Middleweight is 80, basically 80, or 82.3 in the gi. That, again, for people listening, the 80 kg. Yeah, 80 kg, sorry, yeah. Um, and what was light, light heavyweight, did you say you competed at? Medium heavy is... Or medium heavy Probably eight six kilos more. So Indeed. touching touching ninety kg basically, and you're five foot, five foot six or seven. You were you like hitting the weights or no 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 no, no. guzzling pints or <laughs> breakfast rolls. <laughs> <laughs> but again, I think it's it's important for people, especially who are thinking of maybe starting out, that even when uh, when you get into the class, typically you're paired up with someone else because yeah. you, you can't really do jujitsu, learn it or otherwise by yourself. No. But I think generally you try and pick a guy, you know, relatively speaking, kind of close to your size. There's no point in having someone who can just lie down and flatten you, basically. No, so no. regardless of size, um, there's a bit for everyone. I think more so in jiu-jitsu than anything else. Like a small guy, like as you said, Marcelo competed in the in the absolute. So that's no way classes and kicked ass worldwide, basically. And he's yeah. a tiny little fella. He's not tiny. But he's in comparison to, you know, a lad who's six foot four and, yeah. you know, 100 kg. Yeah, he's average, he's average size, but he went in there with the monsters, yeah. So, again, how do you get coached now, considering that he's so far away, or what way does that work? So we can trip over to New York a couple of times a year. Like the lads, there's all, I think twice a year now they go over, maybe five or six at a time, spend a week over there. Train like fuck, come back and kill everybody else. Oh, so sorry, you'll organise that, will you? A group of lads yeah, to yeah, head yeah, over? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So we get discounted training over there and everything. Like it's, uh, if, Again, it's Manhattan, it's expensive. Like, so, but because we're on a part of the association, it's a quarter of the price for the lads to train over there. It's savage. And aside from the, the discounted train over there, what's the other perks or benefits or points to being associated? Well, we have um, an online database of all Marcelo's techniques. So he teaches... He has an online curriculum or database of his techniques that he puts out every night. He'll show his sparrings that he did and he'll show some a new two or three new techniques a week. Like they're not new, they might be just a little bit refined or a little bit from a oh, excuse me. From a different position. And then we have a curriculum for teaching beginners and intermediates and so that's our that's where, where I'll get a lot of my coaching is from the online database for Marcelo. Okay and Age groups, then, like you were saying, that the whole curriculum is there. Like, what ages do you do you train? Cause my young lad is probably a little bit young. He's three and a half, or is he too young? He's like, too is young. There, yeah, he's too that. young. Yeah. So, like, what, from what age do, uh, do kids? It's supposed to be seven. Learn? Okay. But six-year-olds have started sneaking in. I think a couple of five-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> fake IDs. Little fake IDs. Yeah. Uh, they're just hard. Well, they're not hard work. It's actually harder work with less of them. If that makes sense. If, you, if you've only six or seven kids in a class, they're a fucking nightmare to deal with. Whereas if you have about 20, they kind of fall in line, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, look the, her- to the, the older mentality ones. nearly. Yeah, yeah, so, but, yeah, so, like, for the youngers, for, like, what's the fifth and sixth classes? Baby uh, infants, I go, by the, I go by the school years. Well, fifth and sixth class would be... Oh, fifth and sixth, five and six-year-olds, sorry, um... Well, if you start school at like four or five, that puts you in junior infants. Senior. So senior infants first class maybe will be five and six or yeah, seven there so thereabouts. Like that for them ages, it's just games you're teaching them. Of course, and you sneak in a bit of wrestling, or you sneak in a bit of a bit of a mount escape, or and that's it. Like even up to the ten year olds, you you just want them to have fun. Yeah, do you know what I mean? You want to move and you want them to get red in the face, get a bit sweaty. But have fun. Do you know what I mean? You want them to co- want to want to come back. Yeah, no, I, and that's I, what we do. I feel that's missing from the GEA, in, 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 especially when I was growing up. What I saw with my friends, and myself included, 
there was a, an onus that you, for a start, had to train in a particular club. That, like, it was your local club and that was it. Like, the idea of me as a Wolf Tones hurler, say, playing for the O'Matneys, which is a five-minute trip down the road, like, you know, my entire family history would yeah. spin around in its grave <laughs> if I was to dare do such yeah. a horrendous thing. Like, I suppose with, with jiu-jitsu and martial arts in general, you can kind of... You can try out different places, and you know the earlier the better. And as you say, so yeah. long as it's fun, and so long as you're learning, and it's a bit of, yeah, um, a bit of a worker for kids, it's it's all good. But what typically what's the type of person that kind of gravitates towards you guys, or why do you think it's it's older guys that I don't seem know. to be coming to you? When we said from Foxy, Foxy's very old. He's uh, <laughs> he's forty two. I don't I don't know why he's, he's probably a couple of years older than me. I, like we're older, we have both of us have two or three kids each. Like we're uh, we're not exactly big fucking fellas, you know. We're we're just normal fuckers, you know. Yeah. Um, and that's what the most important part, of, from, especially from starting. The most important part of the gym was the atmosphere for me when you, when you came in. Look, it's like um, in a GAA club or in a soccer club, there's camaraderie, right? But you're still probably competing for places on a team. Oh, without a shadow of doubt. Which you don't have in jiu-jitsu. It's not a team sport, but it is a fucking team sport. Do you know that sort of a way? Yeah. So it's a team sport where you're not competing for a place in that team as well, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think, again, I touched on it the last day. There's a real rising tide floats all boats elements yeah. to jiu-jitsu. And the better you can make the guy you're training with, the better you're going to become, and yeah. etc. Well, that's why a jiu-jitsu coach is a strange... It's one of the few coaches... Like, I don't know if a boxing coach boxes with his students, does he? I don't I think so. Typically, I wouldn't have thought so, no. I don't think so. So basically, what I'm doing is I'm teaching... That class we did, I'm teaching everybody how to beat me up. Yeah. So, like, when somebody... When one of the lads tap me, it's kind of... Uh, there's a mixed feeling of pride and you, you bastard, you caught me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's strange. That's basically what I'm doing. Like we're teaching people how to beat you up, and it's it's happening. Like I'm, we're getting older. The lads coming in are getting younger and stronger and fitter, and they're going to catch up with us soon. Well, I think it's it's a credit to you because one thing that I I couldn't help but notice while I was here was, and again to lay it out for people, we started off the class, we kind of paired up you. You pick a guy, whoever's beside you, relatively the same size as you. And you'll, you'll do the kind of technical teaching part of the class, yeah. which is, say, the, the first three quarters of the class. Uh, you go through a few drills, and then afterwards you have a kind of a, a free rolling session. So what is it, three minutes of rolling, and then which is light sparring, essentially, with a 30-second rest? Yeah, normally, it depends. Like, dep- every day is different. I could do five minutes, I could do one 15-minute round, or I could do a line drill. Again, let's just keep it, mix it up, you know? Yeah, but the point I was going to make there was... And it's a credit to, to you and, and probably uh, Paul Fox as well. Literally every single person, without exception, said, uh, sorry, what's your name? To me, yeah. Fran, my name's Jim, or, or whoever it happened to be. Like, and even that was kind of cool. Like, you know, yeah, no, they, 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 they did bother their arse to say hello. Do you know yeah. in a way? No, they had a great... And I, I think it is, in general, that's jiu-jitsu people that are... They're just more humble and they're, they're warmer, they're nicer people. Yeah, it's it's strange that there's an analogy there between um, I found I find cyclists to be quite up their own arse, taking up the road. Take yeah, taking up the road faster. It's, but I don't know. There's a certain arrogance to, to them, which I don't find in triathletes who right. are cyclists. And I, I don't know. I don't know what it is there that I, I, I don't know what it is. I, I can't put my finger on it. But there's something about jujitsu guys. They don't have that that arrogance. They don't have it's, and it's not that they lack competitiveness because jiu-jitsu, is a, if you want it to be, it can be extremely competitive. Yeah. Well, I think at the back of it all, like we're a bunch of nerds, really, jiu-jitsu people. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And here, there is some fucking arseholes. Let's, like, there's arseholes in everything you do. Yeah, Some certainly. people will. I know they say, uh, jiu-jitsu humbles you, but some people get through the cracks, you know what I mean? There's certainly a few arseholes floating around. Um, but yeah, I think... Uh, that's again people who aren't, weren't into sports like the the guys who play computer games and the the nerdy kids who write comic books like they all do jiu-jitsu now 
Yeah, very much so. It's great. And they're really well. good. They're not big and strong, but they're so technical and yeah. they fucking tie you in knots. Like, it's great. It's yeah. really good. It is a thinking man's sport, I think. Yeah. Uh, what do they call it? Human chess. Human chess. I think that, that's a, a, a cool analogy for it. Like. Yeah, I don't know how to play chess, so. <laughs> I'm not smart enough. I'm more of a checker sort of a fella. <laughs> Listen, Roger, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. I'm going to get you to plug the different Facebook pages and websites again for anybody yeah. that's interested in joining you. Yeah, so Facebook, Instagram, um, just Royal Grappling Academy. Just search them, you'll find it. And org, orga.ie. Okay, and for, is there ages or women's? Or did you had a women's session there a while ago, did you? Or? defense thing here a couple of weeks ago, yeah. I'm trying to get women's class, a women's only class going here. We have... See, this is the problem. We only have, like, six women members. So we're trying to get that demographic up a bit. And are they all training kind of exclusively in a women's class? Or is no. it mixed? Or, no, okay, they're so they're, mixed. they're in with the lads. They're okay. in with the lads. So I'm trying to get women's only. And they should be, eventually they should mix in anyway, but we'll, we'll get that going soon. Brilliant. So if any of uh, the ladies listening are interested, maybe send you a message to see what, what the crack is. Yeah. Um, and the lads, uh, similarly so, and irrespective of age weight athleticism yeah. you don't the big do I need to get in shape for jiu-jitsu you can't get in shape for jiu-jitsu it's like even you said like you're in good shape but jiu-jitsu is different to, to anything else I was in bits at the end of this class I was, yeah. and that's why I wanted to actually take the photo with you um, directly after the class I wanted people to see the fucking state of me basically yeah. after the class <laughs> and I'm, I'm fit like yeah. I, I run co- I run miles cross country every day. I swim in open water. I do all sorts of different things. Yeah. I, I wash my diet and everything else. Everything is clean eating. I'm relatively it fit, is. but it's a it's a different type of fitness. It and is. that's not to say that you have to be a, a supreme athlete to do it. I'm sure that there's guys here, even yourself included, that mightn't be able to keep up with me at the running or the swimming. But it's just it's just it's a different type it's of fitness, yeah. I suppose. Completely different. And uh, uh, plug Junction Six as well. This place is fucking like there's a yoga studio, there's a an altitude training center, a gym, a vegan shop. Like this place, uh, check this place out as well. It's not fun. just us, yeah. E- even just looking around it, it's class. It's it's it's. A I brilliant think facility. I think it's the first health and fitness village in uh, Europe. Okay, I, lo- I love the definitely concept. Definitely Ireland, definitely Ireland. But I think they, they they were selling it as the first one in Europe. It's a, it's a great concept because ev- even there between the the class and, and setting up the mics and, and whatever else, like I went down and I got myself like a, a scone and you know you, I'm sure you can get coffee. You got yourself a yeah. smoothie and you know, salads and wraps and. And is there a kind of a is there a general membership? Is that a thing? There's not no um, like I remember I'm working on getting discounts to the gym and to the yoga place and. Uh, that I, like I want to try that altitude training place myself. I think I, I noticed that just as I walked by. What what is that? Is that like it's an a, airtight room? That it's they, an airtight room that they jack up the temperature in and they take out the oxygen. So training that. So it makes your body work that bit harder to do the it same does, thing. And, and like I know a lot, a lot of these things are fads, but I don't think this is one of the fads because you're hooked up to a heart monitor. You can see they have a big screen, and you can see exactly everybody's data is on the screen. So you see your heart rate, your calories, and it's measured against your own fitness so you're not going against everybody else so your fitness if you're in the red you're in the red against yourself you know what I mean yes. let's say your resting heartbeat is 70 so for you I don't really know much about that shit but for you to to be training very hard to get in the red you're going to have to train a lot harder than somebody who's not fit if that makes sense yes yes so she could be she could be training hard, but just walking. She could be on the red walking because she's out of shape. Yeah. And you could be an athlete and you could still be on the orange, but you're going 100 miles an hour, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, of course. Yeah. So yeah, I think you have that a lot with, uh, with Olympians. They, they move to you know, mountainous regions yeah, to yeah. train for the, for the altitude. And that's a, what is that? That's a lack of oxygen, I think, is it? I don't know. Some about the, the red the blood cells. Red blood cells, yeah. I think you have to produce more at a higher altitude to do the same kind of workout so then when you compete at a lower altitude you've got a, a surplus of red blood cells yeah and, but then one of the lads was saying uh, you're supposed to sleep in it as well or something to get the yeah, full benefit so I don't really know what the fucking but look it's a fucking great workout and you're, you the data is right in front of you and you get I think the email you get feedback of your workouts and I think it's pretty cool and I think that's one thing that we actually didn't touch on which I'm glad I'm, I'm after thinking of there now it's that it's the workout in jiu-jitsu it's not just it's not just hard it's um it's almost like competitive yoga to a degree you get a you get a great stretch you get a like a 
you know the kind of way like, like when you go out for a, a run like if, if somebody's listening to this and they've never ran at all if they go out the door and you know run a kilometre or two and come home the next day or the next couple of days you know their legs are going to be sore but I know I know even sitting here now come tomorrow and probably the next day me fuck the back of me neck the front of me neck yeah. the side of me elbow the, you know it's, it really is it couldn't really work out more of your body than no it's fucking savage of course I'm very biased but everybody should do jiu jitsu Really <laughs> yeah, look you get calmer it's, it's talk about stress relief it's the most when somebody's out there trying to choke you you're not thinking about the wife at home or the bills or the no. fucking the car I need to service the car you can't because if you, if you start thinking about that shit you're going to get choked yeah no, I've, I've used that analogy before um, even with, with striking and, and rolling in jiu jitsu is, is the exact same it's, it's a in a weird sense it's a form of meditation because you're you have you're, to be in the moment you, you really do like in, you, traditionally with meditation that you know you, you go to a really quiet space you get comfortable and you, you focus on your breathing and the idea is that you give your fucking brain a, a, a 10 minute rest from the bills and this that and the other yeah. but there's a lot of effort required to do that with jiu jitsu when some lad is literally trying to strangle you say you're not yeah. thinking of all those things and it's a it's a nice break from from it's reality to a degree fucking, it's play wrestling again when you were kids except yeah. you get away with it it's <laughs> strange it is strange I think but that's it, it one of the lads I used to, I, I worked with in America he, he used to call it a it's a cheat code for life because you get to work out that you actually want to do it's not like going to a gym where I, like I couldn't go to a gym it's fucking boring for me to lift weights ah, it's tedious it, it, you want to go and you want to do jiu jitsu yeah like even in the morning like there's lads there that were training this morning like two or three of them will be back tonight you're not going to do that you're not going to play soccer twice in a day are you would you want to no 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 and I think that the things about or the thing about team sports is whether it's you know, football or soccer or rugby the backs train with the backs and the forwards train with the forwards and even during the games you know you, you mightn't you mightn't talk to a forward if you're a full back do you know that kind of way or yeah. either in in or if you're a striker, you know, strikers hang around with strikers and defenders hang around with defenders, etc. To, to a degree, but here in jiu-jitsu land, say, you're all very much lumped in together, which yeah. I think is kind of... It is, and everybody's different as well, different fucking, different walks of life. You, get, you meet people you never really... Like soccer players or football players, they're all... They're kind of the same sort of people, aren't they? They are, there's a, there's, a, there's a type. Yeah, like in here you can get... Again, you get them nerds, you get the... You get the fucking electricians, but you'll get uh, lawyers and you'll get f- doctors and you can get anybody in here, cops, you get them all in here. Yeah, it's a, it's a great um, class leveller, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Everyone rolled into one. But listen, Roger, again, it's been an absolute pleasure. I couldn't recommend anybody checking out your uh, Facebook page, Royal Grappling Academy, or ie. You're on Instagram, you're on Facebook. I'm sure you can send messages and all the rest. Yeah. The times and everything else are, are on board. And as usual, there's a, a 75% discount if you use the, the code words off the lead. <laughs> <laughs> That's I a lie. I wishes you. <laughs> it's a nice million, brother. Thanks very much for having me, Fran. Cheers, all the best, man. bro. Take care. Good stuff.